Welcome back to Battletech Faction Briefings. Today, we are looking at one of the original five mercenary companies from the original 1984 edition of the game. Linden's company is a short-lived unit with a very odd history. In fact, the name of the unit would change based on how many soldiers they had in their forces. At their peak, the unit was known as Linden's Regiment. Sadly, they have the shortest existence of any of the original mercenary teams. Sadder still, they don't have a great battle record. Despite that, this oft-forgotten team has an interesting history that sets them apart from other mercenary forces. Their mercenary emblem is a circle with a knight chess piece in the center. It doesn't evoke much in terms of aggression or intimidation, but it does show the thinking nature of the mech force. The color scheme of gray and red is simple but effective. A fairly easy mech force for mech commanders to paint, but might get mixed up with several other units with very similar colors. There are no novels about Linden's company, but they are referenced in a short story and several source books. Thus, if you do not want minor spoilers for this unit, I have provided a timestamp you can jump to. Linden's company is one of the many cases where a mercenary unit is built out of a previously existing unit. In this case, it was Riley's Armored Cavalry. There is no information on the origin of this unit. All that is known is that they worked for the Draconis Combine in the Third Succession War. In 3015, the unit was working for the Draconis Combine and went on a diversionary operation on Driscoll's world. The mercenaries faced three to one odds on that world, with no reinforcements coming. Meanwhile, the main Combine forces took a less protected world. This is not an uncommon practice for the Great Houses, but it oftentimes has disastrous consequences for the mercenary unit. In the case of Riley's Armored Cavalry, they were nearly wiped out, with only Captain Owen Linden and a few mercenaries escaping. The group made their way to the Federated Sons and became a new mercenary company. Not surprisingly, they took their first contract with the Federated Sons to battle the Draconis Combine. During their work for the Federated Sons, Linden's company was involved in a multi-year campaign on Remus III. At this time, Linden's company and the 3rd Davian Guards faced off with the Black Widow Company of the Wolf's Dragoons. This part of the history comes from a campaign book, so there are aspects of the history that are a little unclear. What we do know is that during the fighting with the Black Widow Company, Owen Linden died. This occurred at some point between 3025 and 3026. At this point, Sarah Linden took over as the commander. Due to her age and rank at the time of taking over, it is likely she was his daughter, but annoyingly enough, I can't find anything to confirm that hypothesis. During the War of 39, the unit had grown to Linden's battalion. They went to Bergman's planet to reinforce Fedcom troops. They had an early victory taking the planet, but a six-month counterattack forced them from the world. Yet another defeat for this mercenary band. As of the 3040s, Linden's battalion was set as the protectors of a planet called Canard. In the late 3040s, they crushed a company-strength pirate force that attempted to invade Canard. Linden's battalion took control of the pirate's dropship as an additional reward. During this time, the unit continued to grow and became Linden's regiment, with some help from the Fedcom military. After the Battle of Tukiad, they faced off with Clan Jade Falcon. After being moved towards the border between the Jade Falcon occupied territory and the Federated Commonwealth, Linden's regiment was put upon by clan forces after entering their territory. The unit survived their battles, but was reduced back to Linden's battalion. They ended their contract with the Federated Commonwealth after being stationed on a place for a short time between 3054 and 3057. At that time, Sarah Linden, to everyone's surprise, accepted a contract with the Draconis Combine. She did this to help improve relations between the Draconis Combine and other mercenary forces. Linden's battalion was set as peacekeepers on CAF. On 20 July 3058, a Lieutenant David Longstreet was attacked by the Word of Blake, but was saved by an old model Highlander. It is believed he was saved by Great Gotha's Ghost, a rare sighting of a ghost mech. 
Whether this happened or was a tall tale is for the mech commander to decide. Personally, it doesn't seem to fit in with many of the more realistic military stories we have, but there are several tales of ghost mechs in Battletech fiction. So as I said, it is up to the mech commander to determine if this is real or just a tall tale. Over time, things grew more chaotic on CAF due to it being part of the Chaos March, which meant there were many threats to deal with. During their deployment, Linden's battalion would face off with the Denebola Freedom Theater Militia, the former Sky March Militia, who had tangled with the Grey Death Legion years before. By 3062, they ended their contract with the Draconis Combine and returned to Outreach. At some point after their return, Jamie Wolfe asked Colonel Linden to join the Allied Mercenary Command, which she accepted. This was an organization that was set up as a response to the growth of the Word of Blake in 3066. The founding members also included the Dismal Disinherited, the Northwind Highlanders, and the Wolf's Dragoons. This group was designed to assist planets fighting the Word of Blake who couldn't afford mercenary backup. Their first mission with this organization was to protect the planet of Liberty. There, they faced terrorists who were rumored to be under the command of the Capellan Confederation. Sadly, the final mission of Linden's battalion was on a mission to liberate Mars. However, they were killed to the last man before setting foot on that planet. On 8 December 3067, Linden's battalion was no more. Except... At some point during the Dark Age, Linden's company was reformed. There is little to no information about this version of the unit or how they came back. What is known is that they were on Galatea when they were approached by a representative of the Aliena Mercantile League. They joined several mercenary groups to assist in defending this newly established nation. However, this begs the question of how Linden's company came back from the dead. My main theory is that Catalyst forgot that Linden's company had been wiped out and list their unit in Tamar Rising. That being said, we don't know what happened to the dependents of the soldiers who died at the Battle of Mars. It is possible that years after the death of the unit, a Linden attempted to rebuild the family company. There is plenty we don't know about the Ill Clan era, so they might have a story in the future that fills in the gaps. As this is a short-lived unit, there aren't many mech warriors to discuss. This is compounded by the lack of fiction expanding their story. Owen Linden, the original leader of the company, who was also a high-ranked member of Riley's Armored Cavalry. He is a medium mech pilot and served until he died in combat. His primary mech is unknown. Sarah Linden, the second commander of Linden's company, who took over when Owen died. She was also a medium mech pilot but we don't know what her primary unit was either. Marco Schwartz. He is a former hover racer and a proponent of the Free Sky Movement, which led to tensions with FedCom officials. Marco joined the regiment to add more thrills to his life. He pilots a spider. Linden's company, battalion, and regiment are generally known for using light and medium mechs. While they do have beef with the Draconis Combine, the grudge doesn't seem as intense as it tends to be for other mercenary groups. Thus, there are a few limitations this unit would have in building their forces. It is likely they would have units that are more common to the Lyran Commonwealth and Federated Sons. Once again, we have a mercenary force with almost no fiction. There is one old Battlecore story that has an account of a pilot seeing Gotha's ghost, which also includes other accounts of the ghost mech as well. Beyond that, everything else is accounted for in source books. Linden's company is the shortest lived of the original five mercenary forces. Thus, it is obvious why this unit isn't very popular. Not only do they lack fiction, but their battle record features many defeats. It just doesn't make them a unit the average mech commander would like to put out on the board. Their revival is also weird, as it seems to come out of nowhere with little fanfare or explanation. As I said earlier, it feels like Catalyst forgot they had been destroyed during the Jihad. The Ill Clan era might be a chance for Linden's company to move past their previous failures. However, that would require them getting fiction 
and I get the feeling that won't happen. It feels as if Linden's company is just meant to be a whipping boy sitting in the corner waiting to get beat up by the next big bad that threatens the galaxy. Even if they remain mostly a historical footnote, Linden's company is still an interesting case study as they are often used to show how dangerous an enemy can be. Due to their pathetic history, I doubt there will ever be a Linden's company force pack, nor do I expect them to rise up in popularity anytime soon. However, if this video changed your mind on the unit, then I'm glad. My next video will be a fan suggestion, and I'm looking forward to covering another small faction that deserves more love. If you have a suggestion, let me know in the comments. A big thank you to all the mech commanders who have subscribed. Remember to keep your weapons hot and your reactor cool. Until next time, I'll see you at the tavern.